Good morning, people of St. Paul's. Please be seated. If you were in church last week, you would have heard about St. Paul's concerns about the divisions in his beloved community of Corinth, a group of followers of the Jesus movement, which Paul himself had founded around the year 50 or so. You would have heard how he was concerned that the issue of spiritual gifts was dividing the people, where some were boasting of their spiritual gifts and they put them ahead and above others. To the contrary, Paul says, we are all gifted with spiritual gifts by the power of the Spirit. So Paul's now living about 180 miles away in Ephesus, which is now in Turkey, when some friends from Corinth, Apollos and Stephanon, begin to warn him of the divisions that have begun to arise in that community. So great was Paul's concern about the new followers of Jesus in Corinth that he wrote no fewer than four letters to them, only two of which have been handed down to us. So great was Paul's concern that he himself refers to one of the lost letters as the letter of tears. Paul is clearly not happy with what's happening in Corinth. As Paul continues to address his concerns to the fellow Jesus followers in Corinth, he uses this image of the one body to help us understand that unity is not the same as uniformity. Well, he's not the first one to use the image of the body of Christ. It was kind of like a meme in antiquity. To put it in a very concrete way, now that Christ's physical body is not longer present to the church, we ourselves have to become the hands and feet of Christ. In the words of St. Teresa of Avila, God has no hands or feet. Therefore, we have to become the hands and feet of God. In other words, unity is not the same thing as uniformity. And all our unity comes from our baptismal covenants. Not only that, but Paul writes that it's precisely the weakest members of the body because presumably the weaker factions in the Corinth community were mocked and disrespected that deserve the greatest honor whilst it behooves the stronger members to learn modesty and step into the background. We are all at least one member of the body of Christ because we are all baptized and that makes us equally important. Looking at the church as the body of Christ opens us up to seeing the beauty of diversity in the church. Dr. Martin Luther King wrote from a jail in Birmingham, Alabama. In a real sense, all life is interrelated. All of us are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. The diaconia is a humble but important member of the body of Christ. Perhaps you could say that if there are four limbs on a body, the diaconia is such a limb, along with perhaps the order of bishops and presbyters and the laity. <clears throat> At our ordination, in 2009, Cindy and I promised to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. <clears throat> we promise that at all times, our lives and teachings are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. Deacons are of the church, not in the church. Deacons are not church mice, but they are field mice. When there is a gas leak in the area, some in the gas company are called to monitor the crisis from the safety of the National Grid headquarters. <clears throat> but others are called to investigate the problem with what's called sniffer vans. Have you seen those sniffer vans? They have these plastic funnels that hang from their bumpers that almost touch the ground <clears throat> to sniff out traces of natural glass. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dearly beloved, deacons are the sniffer vans of the church. 
to sniff out the needs of God's people. Where are the poor? Where are the homeless? Where are the addicted? Where are the spiritually dehydrated and the lost? Whom are we as a church not serving? Cindy, would you join me up here for a while? A couple of words to you. Now, Cindy, as an example of a deacon, has exemplified these values of the diaconia in her years here at the chapel. I love that image of her ministry to the spiritually dehydrated of the children of God, a ministry that I think has gone online a while ago. Cindy has exemplified these values in her work with people with addiction through the AA program, in her preaching and the proclamation of the gospel, and her serving at the table, and in her dismissing of the people. Cindy, it was a particular blessing and a privilege to go through the years of diaconal formation together with you. Some of my best memories include those of sneaking cigars in the back of the monastery at SSJE on 980 Memorial Drive. Then, on a sunny day in 2009, we stood in this cathedral and made our diaconal vows to Bishop Tom. Your family was there, and mine was there, and so were the members of the retirement community that I was serving at the time. And along with us stood a wonderfully warm-hearted man who I wish to remember today, who had a passion for diaconal ministry, especially to military veterans, a man by the name of the Reverend De Deacon David Sullivan. Today, that man is living out his diaconal vocation on a different shore and in a greater light but we feel his presence with us today. People of the cathedral, of Manna and of the crossing, <clears throat> thank you for supporting Cindy in her ministry all of these years. And Cindy, thank you for being the hands and feet of God during your time here. We now hope that together with Anne, you will enjoy a couple of months of rest, and that after that, Pat, are excited about talking to you about your next diaconal adventure. Carolyn Winfrey Gillette is a Presbyterian pastor in Philadelphia whose spiritual gift it is to write new texts to familiar melodies. The one we will sing in a minute is written to the tune of Angels from the Realm of Glory and inspired by her reading of St. Paul's thoughts about the body of Christ. <clears throat> God, with joy we look around us at your world's diversity Folk of every count surround us, and you call your church to see. All are made in your own image. All are people whom you love. In the times we've hurt each other, Lord, you've hurt the ones you bless. Hating sister, cursing brother, we've denied what you express. <clears throat> all, are, <clears throat> excuse me, all are made in your own image. <clears throat> all are people whom you love. God, you sent a savior to us, breaking walls that would divide. By your spirit now work through us as we witness side by side. All are made in your own image. All are people. 